Hey YouTube, Adam here from I'm a Music Mogul, and today I just want to cover a topic that uh, I sort of was thinking about over the weekend, and that is how exactly is the touch bar going to play with Logic X? Now there wasn't much information about uh, what the smart bar or the touch bar can do with Logic X, so let's go ahead and just search that online and see what's going on with this touch bar and uh, Logic X. So I'm just gonna go ahead and search this here. So MacBook Pro Touch Bar support coming early next year, says 9 to 5 Mac. Um, now on the screen or on stage, they did sort of display how it works with Logic. As you can see here, they kind of show that you can adjust the level of an instrument, the gain, tremolo, tone, any of the effects that are on the instrument itself. But uh, they sort of quickly glanced over the audio pros and just straight went to sort of this DJ app that uh, kind of was a little lackluster for me when I watched it. But uh, so they, they didn't give much insight how it's going to work with Logic and it looks like it's not supported by Logic until early next year. And who knows, maybe with Logic X coming next year there's going to be a nice update with new features. Maybe Logic 11, who knows, <laughs> fingers crossed. But uh, let's see here if we could get find any ideas of what can happen. So five ways Apple's MacBook Touch Bar can be used with your doll. Let's see that. So Ask Audio put together a sort of little post right here. So the first one is Global Transport Control. So of course, that is the easiest one to do. You just put your transport controls right on the bar. I don't know how much easier that is because all you really do is hit R for record or space bar to hit play and stop and serve your arrow keys. But um, it is kind of cool to see it here, but why do you need it there if you have it up here? So maybe that's not such a needed item. Uh, navigate the project. Yeah, that could be cool, sort of mimicking what they displayed for Final Cut. Um, that could be cool. Not so much necessarily needed if you're just working on a three minute track. I mean, but uh, it could be cool. Let's go ahead down to plugin controls. See, this is where I think the touch bar will come in handy and come useful. If you're just working with your mouse and you're traveling a lot, it's kind of hard to automate more than one parameter at the same time. And since this is essentially a multi-touch screen, you can sort of automate multiple parameters at once. And also a cool thing is you can also adjust your sound by touching it. So it kind of brings you back to the days where you actually had knobs to turn. In this case, you're just turning something on a screen, but still a lot better to manipulate sounds with your fingers rather than just moving one of these knobs with your mouse. So that could be cool. Individual track controls. Now, of course, you're going to get the record arm, the uh, the solo, the mute and that. Is that going to come too handy? I'm not sure because you could just go over here with your mouse and move it. It's probably a little bit quicker than just moving your finger up to here and sliding that down. But um, I'm sure they're going to include something like that as well. And uh, finally here, sample editor. Now, this could be cool if you're trying to get in there and sort of kind of get the nitty gritty of the sample. Your fingers are a lot more tactile maybe than your mouse. You can just go in there, zoom in and get yourself the, uh, the section that you need from that audio. That's a uh, pretty cool idea is that the touch bar can have. One thing that Ask Audio didn't cover that I'm kind of hoping for is sort of a little mini sort of mixer that goes along this touch bar right here that you could sort of manipulate multiple tracks at once. Now I don't know how they're going to implement it because uh, if they leave the faders this long, you only have so much real estate. But uh, maybe they can kind of use it like this and you kind of automate the volume with knobs instead of sliders like this one. But let's go ahead and see what else there is. MacBook Test Bar support for Logic coming next year, of course. We just heard that. Uh, this means you won't be able to use the new MacBook Pro Touch Bar Enhance. Yet the app will still function normally, but you won't have the fancy tours. So it doesn't look like there's much information on it here. Let's type in GarageBand and see if there's any other info on that. Can't believe they're focusing on GarageBand over Logic. Apple updates Xcode, iMovie Pages, GarageBand, Keynote, Numbers with Touch Bar compatibility. 
So here it's showing you the touch bar sort of features with the DJ software. Again, I don't know why they show that. Even the announcement or the display of that, it just didn't really resonate. It kind of felt awkward to me and no one really cared. So I shouldn't say that, but I'm not sure. It just felt a little lackluster to me. Uh, so they're not saying much. It just says that they upgraded GarageBand. So if you're using GarageBand right now, you got yourself some uh, touch bar compatibility. But of course, those new MacBook Pros don't come out for another couple of weeks. But uh, that's pretty much it. There's not much out there. Let me know in the comments below what you would hope that touch bar can do with Logic X. Crossing my fingers, maybe Logic 11, new update, who knows. Let me know in the comments below some of your ideas how they Apple can implement that touch bar. Because there are so many cool things you can do. And I'm still yet to sort of come to a conclusion whether the touch bar is actually going to be useful. Or if it's not going to be useful at all. It's maybe gimmicky, I don't know. But uh, time will tell when we get our hands on a nice MacBook Pro. So once again, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think the touch bar can do with Logic X or what it should do. And your wish list for the touch bar features as well. That's it for me, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Talk to you all soon. Later. Peace.